to us, Lord. We are custodians of that word. May we know how to be good custodians of what you've put in us, O oh God. May we not be wasteful, Lord. May we not be Christians who speak one thing and live something different. Indeed, may we be doers of the word, Lord, and not just hearers. Father, may our lives be aligned with what we declare. May our lives be aligned with your word, Lord, that we may bear fruit that brings glory to your name. Amen. We want to sing one more song as we, as we just prepare for the word. Joe, please just go to the, to the last song on the slide. and do, I, I invite all of us to just rise. Rise up, please, as we sing this. And when we sing this song, uh, after we finish, we'll receive the word. Okay? we call to him he will answer us if we run to him he will run to us if we lift our hands he will lift us up come now praise his name all you saints of god sing for joy sing for joy to god our strength
Hallelujah. Shall we pray in the presence of the Lord? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your loving mercy and grace. We thank you for who you are, O Lord Jehovah God. We acknowledge your lordship of our lives. We acknowledge your lordship over this place. And we declare this is your church. Have your way, O Lord Jehovah God. We want to thank you, O God, for the time of intercession earlier on. We thank you, O God, even for the time of praise and worship. Oh Lord God, it's a joy to come and minister to you and let you know how much we love you. And thank you, Father God, because you dwell in the praises of your people. And we are encouraged this morning, even as we have lifted up our hands and lifted up our voices and instruments unto you. Thank you, Father, for the work that you're doing in this place. Thank you, Father, for the way that you're gelling us together and the way you're building us together in our most holy faith, even as we walk together. Thank you for the privilege that it is to have a family that we call the family of God. Thank you, King of Glory, for the relationships that are being built in this place. Thank you, Father, because they shall last forever. We thank you, Lord Jehovah God, even as you've um, caused us to be able to begin to walk in a very open way with one another and to journey together and care about one another. It's a privilege, Lord Jehovah, King of Glory, to even be called Sozo Church of God. We thank you, Lord Jehovah God, for our online uh, family that is watching right now. Thank you, Father, that we're able to go online. Thank you also for our technical team. We ask you, Father, to just um, watch over the network and watch over that particular forum. And Lord God, may your presence that is in this place visit upon the people that are watching us from afar and near, O oh God. We thank you, King of Glory, for your word. We ask, Lord God, that it would go out with power, and we ask, Father, that it would encourage somebody. Father, we ask that there would be no distractions in the name of Jesus Christ. May you open the ears of our understanding. May you open our hearts, O oh God, to be fertile ground that your word can fall upon. We thank you, Lord God, even as we seek to know how to listen to your voice. We thank you because your sheep know your voice, and Lord God, they hear it, and they also follow you. We bless you. We glorify your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. It's wonderful to see so many of you. We bless God for each and every one of you. Um, the online family, we thank God for you. I can see we are 15. I've actually decided to just open the app on my own on this side so that I don't feel like I'm flying without, uh, without any um, view. So I can be able to see your comments. I can be able to see what you're saying. Um, even as we walk together in fellowship. We love you guys. Um, we appreciate you. We appreciate everything you do for us. So many of you um, contacting us from all over the world. We are very thankful to you. And we continue to pray for you. And we continue to give you cover. For those of you that don't have a church, we continue to give you cover. There are some of you who contact us from uh, um, you know, places like Saudi Arabia and from Dubai, where we can connect you with a family that's close by. We do. Where we are unable to do that, we give you a proper cover in the name of Jesus Christ and indeed feel at home, feel as a member of this family of God. Amen. Are you blessed to be in the house of the Lord today? Yes. You're thankful to be here? Amen. We had a wonderful time of intercession earlier on. We prayed for the country. Um, we prayed for all of you as well, those of you who are not here. And we took time to sanctify ourselves and prepare ourselves before the presence of the Lord. You want to hear the voice of God during a service? Come early. There's something about preparing yourself through sanctification in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Oh dear, what's happening to the little one now? Okay. All right. Hallelujah. We bless God for his goodness, his mercy. Thank you, ministry team as well. Um, which cell was responsible for cleaning today? Thicker Road, was it? I saw some people from Thicker Road. Huh? Yes, I saw Betty. I saw, I saw Mama Moses. I saw a number of people here yesterday. Um, I also saw some people from uh, Luakabete as well. Uh -huh. I saw Lona's whole clan here. It was exciting to see them here, even though I know it was not your cell that was responsible. Can we appreciate the Thicker Road cell? They did a good job. They did a good job. Well done, well done, well done. And they were here early as well. They were here by 7 o'clock. There wasn't much for them to do because the place was clean, so they just joined in intercession. And it was just wonderful to see so many of them. They have quite a number of men in their cell, by the way. So it was good to see so many men here early in the morning, um, even just seeking the Lord's face. Amen. And the place is clean. We thank God. Today I was able to remove my shoes because my high heels were giving me a bit of trouble. And I was thankful that my feet were not filthy, you know, or dirty at all anyway. Yeah. So well done. It's a big space and we are thankful 
uh, for your faithfulness. Yesterday afternoon I was here. Um, I had to drop some little worshippers here. It was exciting to see the worship team really bonding. And uh, they are, they've just been growing every day. It's wonderful to see them. It's wonderful to see even when they're given a, an opportunity to give their voices, you know, for their voices to be heard. Victory belongs to you. Those things we are doing. And still, there's none of them that was those ones of, did you hear me? Did you hear how wonderful they are singing? You know, they were very humble before the Lord and even just seeing my husband interrupting anything to do with praising anybody and just emphasizing, let's lift our hands before the Lord. It's wonderful when worshipers are bowed before the Lord because God will lift them up every single time and he'll continue to use them. Let's appreciate our worship team. They are so wonderful. They have really, really grown. Marie, you've grown uh, and mentored people. Of course, you've all been mentoring one another. Uh, uh, OG, my husband as well. I know the older ones like, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Pastor Nick there. Hallelujah. God bless you. And, uh, um, you know, Pastor Caro is on uh, vacation, by the way. I sent her away. I felt it was time for her to rest. And, uh, you know, just told her to just go and rest. But this morning she was up so early sending us messages. Please remember this. Please remember that. I'm checking online to see whether she's there. I've not seen her. And I bless God. She shares her name with my cousin called Karen Jerry as well. So for a few seconds I thought it was her. And I was about to text and say, can you get offline, you know? Because I've just told her, go visit another church. Go refresh, refresh yourself in the presence of the Lord. Because, you know, for someone like her, when she's here, it is work at the same time as, as, as uh, receiving from the Lord. So it's wonderful to give her an opportunity to go and rest and we are thankful uh, Jason told us that she's having a very good time is she still having a very good time? yes, hallelujah, and getting refreshed and she's waking up with her bible and scripture I love it, I love it it's good when we get an opportunity to rest, amen I worry a little bit about when Marie gets a chance to rest, so I'm still waiting upon the Lord for that one, but I know even then, she went to Ethiopia and everything was fine, yeah <laughs> amen, hallelujah so uh, yesterday, I just wanted to share what I saw. And you can visit us, by the way. There was a gentleman from Bungoma, a bishop from Bungoma, who decided to come and pay us a visit, Bishop Wanjala. And he said he just had singing, and he wanted to come and see the church, and he was encouraging us, please, let's preach the gospel. Let's not go off to other things. I said, bro, you need to really watch us online. We are definitely on the right track together. But it was good to hear that encouragement from him. So we made a new friend yesterday. And then there was a dance team at the back. Eh, 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 Moses. Aish. Aish. You know me, I was like, you know what? I love to dance. So I went, eee, dance team. So I went in front. So we are there, we are dancing. You know? And he's just insisting. At his G, your knees have to be at this level. I don't even know if it was the shoulder level. Eh? And you know me and my arms. We Within like less than three minutes, I dropped out of the dance team. So, you know, I just cheered them from the other side. In fact, I had to keep asking, are you people really fasting? Because ooh, just a few seconds, I was seeing Moses like in six ways, eh? sh -sh 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 -sh, going around like this. Anyway, there's a dance team that's coming up. There were so many people. There are at least 20 already. Imagine. So it's an idea whose time had already come. Eh? And there's power in Christian dance. There's power in Christian dance, and it, it has a ministry in itself. It's able to lift up the name of Jesus. King David knew a lot of that. Of course, he, he was the kind that danced until his garments fell off. Eh? So we are growing. You know, just looking, I'm like, we are growing. We're actually growing. Bless the Lord. Amen? We, are, we, are, we stopped looking like two little babies. We're now, we now walking a little bit. Eh? We're walking a little bit. We're getting branches. Hallelujah. Ministries that are growing in the right foundation. And it's very, very exciting to watch a church growing. Of course, watching my little daughter, seven-year-old, playing drums. Today, she really got carried away, but it is well. In fact, I was testing to Jesus, I've learned that there's power in a drama. You know, that a little seven-year-old drama can slow things down, quicken them up. Stop them. You know, <laughs> it was exciting to see that. But I'm very proud of her. You know, she's only seven years old and she's courageous. She's not scared of making mistakes. She's going out and I can't help but think, how is she going to be a few years from now? You know, just having gotten that encouragement of it's okay to be yourself in the house of the Lord. And I thank God for my husband who's not throwing her an eye. And I know he's such a perfectionist when it comes to music. And I thank God that he's just letting her be a child, you know, and encouraging her. Isn't he a wonderful father? Sometimes I tell him, be my daddy, you know? He's such a good daddy. Amen, hallelujah. All right, I'm just preparing myself to preach. <laughs> like I told you, teaching people on how to hear the voice of God is, I think, probably the hardest teaching of all, eh? other than holiness. No holiness is another dimension altogether. So today we want to focus on the dimensions of prayer 
and on hearing God's voice. And of course, we'll be talking about the prayer watches. Uh, we don't want to take too long on it. So I want to be able to stop by 1230 and be able to pray over people. Um, I thank God today the service you know, hasn't uh, taken too long. So we are able at least to finish in good time so that people can just go and rest. And um, maybe minister out there. I don't know whether cells are planning to go and minister. But so that you can do something else in the afternoon. Spend time with your family as well. And then gear ourselves up for the, the week. For those who are not here on Friday, um, the numbers really dropped drastically, by the way. Um, and someone told me it's because it wasn't a Kesha. I don't know why we would prefer a Kesha over prayer. You know, um, you know I'm just wondering. Because um, if you want a Kesha, see, you just come and then we see how far we'll go. Yeah? Isn't it? It nearly became a Kesha. We left at 9.30. Um, we were in the presence of the Lord for five and a half hours. We prayed until we were so exhausted. Um, at some point, you may have seen me leaning upon Brother Masharia like this. Later on, I was like, was that appropriate or not? But I know he knows me well enough, and hopefully you all know me well enough. But Yanni, I could not stand. I, was just, I just pushed my, my, my elbow on him and just told him, bro, Masi, I'm tired. I was feeling like I was going to collapse. Eh? And I was trying to think about it. And the other, I don't know what it was about this Friday, but quite a number of people were very, very exhausted. A number of you shared that. Lynette, please, let's remember her in prayer. Um, she's expecting, as you well know. And uh, she's just been having a lot of pain since, uh, since last week. Um, and we're just trusting the Lord and standing on his word that says, the vine shall not cast its fruit before its time. She's not due until next month. And we know that the Lord will not allow that baby um, to leave that womb until it is the right time. Amen. That's our baby. So we pray for her and we pray for our sister Valentine. I don't know about you, by the way, but I really want to encourage you when we have expectant women amongst us, make it an agenda to pray for them, okay? That is covenant seed. That is the, our children. Those are our babies that are coming through. So we pray for them and we bless them. And of course, once they come, we are able to dedicate them in the presence of the Lord and receive them with much joy. So we are praying for you, sister Valentine. We are praying for Lynette as well. Uh, I think those are the two. Interesting enough, they're in the worship team. So if you want to conceive this year, join the worship team. There's something going on there. <laughs> There's something going on there. How can we have two in the worship team? The way our worship team is small. Eh? There's clearly something going on there as they seek the presence of God. Amen. <laughs> John chapter 10. Let's go to John chapter 10. Did you know that John 666... 666. John chapter 6, verse 66. John 666 said, and many of their disciples abandoned Jesus. John 666. Uh -huh. Many of the disciples abandoned Jesus. The number of man. Eh? When the Trinity is, 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 is removed and we put six, and then six, which is the number of man, and then another six, which is man, man, man. Okay? Tell you. We abandon God. Interesting things that we find in scripture. John chapter 10, verse, from verse 1 to 6. Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same one is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And when he brings them out, his own sheep, when he, sorry, when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet, they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. So, you know, in the, in the Bible, you also hear things like, you know, you hear, yet you don't understand. Okay? So you can actually hear something, but you don't understand what it means. That's why it's good to take down notes. And even after the service, spend the rest of the week meditating upon what God is saying, combing the scriptures for even more, and letting God build you up on his word, uh, marinating upon the word of God until it soaks inside of you, and it brings entrance of light, and it brings life, uh, even for the glory of God. Verse 27 and verse 28 say, says of the same chapter, John chapter 10, verse 27 and 28 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, 
and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Okay? And then there's uh, Luke chapter 10 verse 19, which I want us to look at as well. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give unto you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Somebody say all the power of the enemy. Not some power, all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay? What to account attacks? Yeah? Just be standing on this word that we, we have been given the power to tread on the serpents and the, serpents and the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, but nothing shall ever harm us. Okay? This last week, I was very blessed when I heard the voice of God. And he said to me, if you are just out there minding your own business, you would be fine. You would be thriving. You would be moving. Everything would be working out just fine. But because you've chosen to mind my business, the enemy attacks you in such a heavy way. And God asked me, do you really think I'm the kind of father who as a result of you going through attacks and suffering because of me that I would abandon you? And those words gave me such comfort. And he said to me, know my character. And then he said to me, trust my character. And this is the same word that I pass on to you. Know the character of God and trust his character. When you have chosen to walk in holiness, when you have chosen to walk in righteousness, when you have chosen to obey God, when you have many paths to use, you have the path of, of hypocrisy like everybody else. You have the path where you sin as you please, but you have said, my life is not my own. I choose to walk in your glory. I choose to walk in your power, I choose to walk with you. When you have chosen to give up everything else, when you have chosen to say, though no one goes with me, yet will I still follow. The cross before me, the world behind me, it's a decision that every believer makes. And when you make that decision, and all of hell looks like it's rising up against you, know that you have a father. And he calls you by name. And he will never leave you, he will never forsake you. Hence the reason why we need to trust God to open our ears, to be able to hear him, to open our eyes, that in the midst of whatever we go through, we are able to know the position of God and where God is. At some point, just about maybe uh, about 10 days or so ago, the enemy raged in very scary ways, and sometimes it rages through the physical, in ways that look like you are truly going to be defeated. And as I was in my room, seeking the face of God and feeling so tired and feeling so overwhelmed, you know, and just feeling a little afraid, maybe a lot afraid, not even a little afraid, and just thinking, Father, what is it? Is it sin? Is it, is it truly just a normal attack? Or what is it, Father? Have we opened any door and the father suddenly sent an angel of God and I don't know which angel it was but I know for sure it was an archangel because of his size he was enormous and he appeared just on the left side of my bed I shared this before and he looked at me and he said I have been sent to protect you by the king of kings and the lord of lords and then you know as I looked at him for like two three seconds I was thinking okay you're big all right but eh, hey, do you know how many are against me and you know, God reads our thoughts. And then he said, open your eyes. I am not alone. And then I was able to see other angels moving around. And my room was saturated. And they told me even outside and around everywhere I was. And he told me, you are safe. And I said, Father, so long as I know your position in my life, I'm okay. For me, the thing I cannot take is where things are raging, trouble is coming, and I don't know where God is. You know, and there's the knowledge where he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But every child of God at one point or another needs to know where he is in terms of either being able to see his position or being able to hear him or being able to feel him. And that's why it's critical that we know the voice of God. On Friday, I talked about something very, very powerful. How many of you are here on Friday? Okay. Was it a powerful teaching? Did you find it helpful? Amen. So I talked about, um, the, the, about prayer and about the kinds of prayer. So we learned about 12 different kinds of prayer. So if you are not here, unfortunately, you missed out on that. So we talked about 12 different kinds of prayer. I'll not be able to engage in that right now. And then I talked about what causes our prayers to be hindered. You see, once you have those two things and you know them, 
It's enough to actually equip you to really get deep and get into the place of prayer. And after that, we really prayed. We prayed for about three hours after the teaching, and we really pressed it. We really prayed for our country. And, you know, even as, a, as a this morning, as the Lord is still telling me the enemy is still raging, the people are still not praying, there are a few who are praying but still not praying, it's so frustrating. It's so easy to go like, Father, now what do I do? I can't flog them into prayer. I can't make them pray. And, you know, it still continues to be something that concerns concerns me. Anytime you post something about prayer, you will only have about maybe, about at most you'll have maybe 30 likes. You wonder whether did people see and not comment? Did they not? Whatever. But the moment you post about, you know, we prayed, the glory of God fell. Suddenly there are like 300 people who are coming now to escort you and you're like, Jesus, where were you when we were praying? Can you just come to the place of prayer that we may pray? Can you fill up the places of prayer wherever you are and let us pray? You know? And the Lord is warning very heavily about up country. This morning I got a message from a young girl who the Lord had spoken to me about her two years ago and said that she's got a gift of prophecy. So I knew that when she t sends me a message, she's speaking from the Lord. And she woke up at 5.30 and she was shaking and she sent a message and she was saying that she had seen major, major attacks and she said it was not in Nairobi. And you know the people up country normally relax whenever you tell them about terror attacks. I don't want to go on air. I'm on air right now. And for those who are, have been off air, you know I've told you exactly the strategy that the enemy is planning. Because I don't want to go on air and say that. But it's not like anything we are used to. And may people pray. Because even if you say people up country, who doesn't know somebody up country? Nobody, isn't it? Everybody knows somebody up country. May we pray. May we learn to be people of prayer. May we learn to pray no matter what's going on and may we learn to stand in the gap instead of waiting for that river of blood. When God calls blood a river of blood, can you imagine what that is? Because that's God. And he calls it a river of blood. God who sees nothing as big calls it a river of blood. We don't want to go there. And may we pray, may we pray, may we pray, may we intercede. For those of you who are praying, don't get discouraged. Keep praying because you know you're praying. So if you hear people are not praying, don't take that as a message to yourself, but as a message to everybody. We need to pray, okay? We're going to look at some dimensions of prayer very quickly before we look at the prayer watches. One dimension of prayer is making requests, okay? Making requests is a dimension of prayer. You make a request to God. It's a dimension of prayer very closely, re closely related to last week's message, to Friday's message. Then there's thanksgiving and praise is a dimension of prayer. So by dimension, we mean it's a space, okay? It's a space. So when you're operating in that space, you're operating in the dimension of prayer where you're making requests or petitions or you're in a dimension of prayer where you're giving thanksgiving and praise to God. There's a dimension of prayer of worship and reverence and adoration. So in terms of worship, you're worshiping God and focusing on who he is. You are adoring him. You're reverencing him. At that moment, you're not looking at anything else. Your whole entire focus is on God. That is a dimension of prayer. It's a level of prayer. It's a space of prayer. A dimension refers to an area and a space where nothing else exists and that's what you're focusing on. So your entire being moves into that dimension. There is a dimension of prayer also called relationship. Relationship. Dimension of prayer called relationship and intimacy. That dimension of prayer operates whether you are praying or not praying. It's a dimension where we always walk in. It's a dimension called relationship and intimacy where God comes through for you because of your relationship with him. Where God comes through for you because of your intimacy with him. Where God deals with you, works on you because of your relationship with him. And where you yourself, your entire lifestyle is made around that dimension where there are things you do and there are things you don't do. There are places you go, there are places you don't go. There's a way you speak, there's a way you don't speak because of the dimension of prayer called relationship and intimacy. There are things you don't watch and there are things you can watch. There are, there, there's time that you can spend on social media and then there's a time when the Holy Spirit tells you enough is enough, that is too much now, it's increasing too much, move away from that. You can engage in idle talk for just a little bit, but after just a little of idle talk, you begin to feel uncomfortable because of the dimension of prayer that is called relationship and intimacy. And it's the most powerful dimension of prayer, by the way. It's the dimension of prayer that is 
normally uh, forgotten, normally left. And if you live in that dimension of prayer called relationship and intimacy, which begins by giving your life to Christ and getting born again, it's not possible without being born again. Then from there, you cultivate a relationship with God. That is a very powerful dimension of prayer. And even before you request anything, the Lord will do it for you. Amen? There's a dimension of prayer called connection. Okay? You'll hear me excuse me, you'll hear me calling it uh, Heaven FM. you hear me calling it Heaven FM. That is where you tune your antennas, okay? Your spiritual antennas are always tuned to God. Ask him, Walker sings, what are you doing? What are you saying? You want to be part of everything the Lord is doing. At any time and any, any, any point in heaven, you want to be a part of what's going on. That is a dimension where his kingdom comes, his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. No matter what's going on in heaven, you are in tandem with what is going on in heaven. It's called the dimension of connection, what is called the presence of God. The presence of God. So you're always practicing the presence of God. You don't switch it on and off. At now it's time to pray. <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us fold our faces so it looks so painful. Some of us shake a little bit so that we look so holy. Some of us move up and down like this. You look like a, a little cult. You know, and you're so used to it. Some of us put our heads to one side. You know, just funny things that we put upon ourselves. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a connection to God. By the way, sometimes when the Lord does this thing with me, in terms of the connection, in terms of the dimension of, of connection and, uh, and God's presence, one of the things I'll be doing, I'll be driving. And sometimes I'll even just break and then look in my rearview mirror as I realize what I've just done. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, I'm so sorry. What just happened? I was driving. I wasn't necessarily in prayer. But just through the years of practicing the connection in heaven, all of a sudden God speaks about something. I'm like, whoa, it's like a light bulb. You've got to teach yourself. You've got to train your spiritual man to be in the dimension of connection where you practice the presence of God where no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you're so connected to heaven, you can feel the changes and you can feel the sphere you're moving into so that then you're like a son of Issachar who's able to tell the signs and the times but also knows what to do. That is the dimension called connection and God's presence which you practice through teaching yourself by praying by fasting by always trying to connect with God until your spiritual man gets to the place where regardless of what you're doing you're connected to God heavens and tenors I've learned also to pray I say God clear my heaven FM that nothing will catch me up but then let me tell you if there's one thing I hate it's drama and you'll hear me saying that I hate drama Probably more than I hate, you know, other things other than sin. I hate drama. I hate Lucifer. I hate anything to do with demons and, and wickedness. But I hate drama. Why do I hate drama? Because nothing interferes with heaven's FM frequency like drama. I don't like drama, by the way. And if you're like a drama queen, you're like a drama king, you just find, I will find my distance. Eh? Regardless of who you are, I don't like drama. And my children know it. Tell them, please, eh? no drama. Because drama, you know, is something that makes you have to attend to it. It moves your attention, etc. I like tranquility. I like an atmosphere of peace. When I'm driving, I'll have a nice CD that is there. If I'm not driving, if I'm in a public transport, I'll always have my headphones on. I like creating the atmosphere where I can hear from God. And normally, worship is a good atmosphere. So for those of you that are in drama, drama, mm -mm. Even when I go by the Anani agency, a lot of times there's so much drama, you know, because of that, that area. I don't know why house, housekeepers and nannies love drama. They love drama. Yeah, but anyway, uh, so a lot of times there'll just be so much drama. You know, yesterday I was dealing with one drama situation where one girl, you know, we posted her um, just not too long ago and then she's overheard by her boss complaining, oh, this company, they deduct her so much money, they deduct her circle. Listen to this conversation. They deduct her circle, they deduct us, I don't know each other expenses. You know, then she's repeating circle. So you're like, if I deduct you circle money, it's your money, I'm helping you. So the, the, the client listens because, of course, sometimes the Lord will just cause them to be heard. And then the client asks her in the morning, what's going on? 
Why were you complaining so much? Why are you so unhappy? She says, we're not allowed to talk about it. She says, but you were talking about it yesterday. You kept me awake talking about it. She says, no, I can't tell you anything. It's just money related, and I can't tell you much about it. In the meantime, by the way, you know she's shouting at the clans, children, etc., etc. And the clans just calls me and tells me, listen, I, I, just, I, mean, I just need my peace with my house. I'll take care of my own children or get someone from elsewhere. But me, I'm not doing this kind of drama. I said, really, drama? Okay, I've got other, other girls available. I'll give you a very peaceful girl. And you know, very quickly, the power changed hands. I had to call the person in for, for, for discipline. And you'd expect that when I tell you, by the way, I understand we have a lot of drama. So I would like us to have a meeting so that we can release you. You go and find a company that doesn't have drama. The person says, <laughs> why are you doing this to me? I'm like, eh. I thought you were unhappy the other night. See, now I'm releasing you. No, I didn't say that. You know, drama, eh? I'm just giving you an example of drama. Yes, and you haven't planned anything, but you're whining and complaining and shouting and screaming and I don't like drama. And me, I will release you to go and have your drama elsewhere. So Heaven FM and connection to Heaven FM, learn how to manage your work. You know some of you, maybe you are in, in environments where your work is dramatic. I used to work in an organization where there was so much drama. Media has drama. You know, and if there's no drama, someone will create drama because drama sells. So for me, I'll just, you know, lock myself sometimes in my room, in my, my office and just call on the Lord and just say, Father, come, let your glory fall now. You know, and you're just taking deep breaths and you're just saying, Father, I want to be in tune with you. And that's how, you know, I calm myself in the presence of God. And I just ask God, I want to tune into you. I give my emotions to you. I, I want my emotions right now to, to, to bow down to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The, the voice that's trying to shout in my head, I take authority of you. I bring you to captivity, to the, 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 the thoughts of God, because the presence of God. Because the Bible talks about take captive of every high thought that seeks to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. So if there's a voice that's shouting and telling you other things, you take authority of it and you bring it to captivity before Christ Jesus. Whatever it's trying to say. Your vision, your sight. You say, Father, thank you for your sight. I choose to see what you see. I refuse to see what I'm seeing right now and I choose to see what you see. Let me see through your eyes. Even loving people, let me see through your eyes. This weekend I bless the Lord. There's someone who has hurt me very deeply and, uh, and I encountered them and it was interesting because I'd prayed over it and when I encountered them, the Lord gave me such a peace, such a love. I looked at the person and I think I saw them in the spirit and I just went over and, you know, just rubbed them on the back and I just spoke the shalom of God on them and I just, I felt my heart go at rest and say, this battle shall not continue anymore and I just had peace. Connecting to heaven FM the Lord will cause you also to be a vessel. I like calling it a, an earthly intersection. You know an intersection? Junction. Eh? An earthly intersection for God. You become a, a, a place, a, 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 an altar of God where the angels of God have a heavenly portal. They can come down and use you and go up and pass back the message and you're always in that space where God can use you. Amen? Alright, next dimension is reading the word of God. When you read the word of God, make it a journey. Don't read it like a novel. And don't, don't read it for the sake of, oh, you know, I haven't read the word of God today. Let me read it. Pick that book and go on an adventure with God. As you read his word, as you look at what is written, as you also seek to understand what was the reason why these words were written to these people, as the Lord takes you through it. And I always say, if you don't, haven't been reading the word of God, don't begin from Genesis. I don't know who said that, let's read the word of God from back to cover to cover. But then if you read the word of God and you say, I'm reading through the Bible, reading through the Bible is a project, okay? But when you're studying the word of God, you don't say, I'm reading through the Bible. You will become very dry. Go to the Gospel of John. Study the Gospel of John. Read it slowly. Come from there. Go to the, the, go to the Hebrews, the, the book of Hebrews. When you come from there, Hebrews will teach you about faith. Go to Romans. You know, then when you go from there, then begin again, you know, go to Colossians and learn about how we love one another and, and how we are and how we are called to be. Go to First and Second Corinthians. Learn about holiness. Learn about godly conduct. Learn about the Lord's Supper. Learn about how the saints carry themselves. Learn about... The 
the problem with sexual immorality, then go again and begin to read the Gospels slowly. Read the Gospels one by one. You know, then hop over to the book of Jude and see it's very, very short, but it talks about the demons and, and our authority. Jude is so brief. It's just a chapter, by the way, so you don't hear Jude chapter one. You just hear Jude verse this and that and the other. Go there. Read the word of God. Ask God to speak to you from his scriptures. Get into a dimension where the Lord can minister to you. Where when you read something, you don't think, oh wow, those disciples were powerful. Go to the book of Acts. Learn about the conduct of the church. You're wondering about where you fellowship. Is it a cult or is it not a cult? Then read about it. Read about how the church operates. How the church manifests itself. Where do you read about how the church operates? The book of Acts. The book of Acts is just about how the church behaves, how the church carries in itself, what you should expect. Things like having cell group meetings, it is actually demonstrated in the book of Acts. They met daily from house to house, okay? So you're not supposed to be in just one house. And you don't hear, at the, oh, you know, they are cooking so many nice things. No, that's not the focus. The focus is on fellowship. The focus on, is on drawing closer. The focus is on doing things for God, praying, calling on the name of Jesus. And then you learn that God actually adds to your numbers. And when you meet from house to house, there's a, our sister Esther. I don't know where she is. Esther. One of our cell leaders, Esther, yes. Esther gave her testimony. And uh, she was sharing about how, although she's not been feeling very well, although she's not been feeling like she's at the level where she was last year, she felt as though maybe she had dropped in terms of her walk with God and her power prayer momentum. But her neighbors have been knocking on her door and saying, we've been hearing prayer. Can we come? I've had a neighbor of mine, actually several neighbors of mine, say, by the way, when do you have your prayers? We would like to come. That's how God adds. When you have the place of prayer, God draws people. The Bible says, lift up the name of Jesus and he will draw all men unto himself. Okay? Lift up the name of Jesus and he will draw all men unto himself. Amen? When you're praying, you know, and you see also in, in, in the book of Acts, as they were ministering to God, as they were praying with fasting and calling on the Lord, the Lord told them, do this. Do that. Do the other. Set apart for me, Barnabas. You know, set apart this person. Set them apart. Send them out. You know, that's the place of prayer. We meet together in houses and homes and we call on the name of God and we are strong when we are two or three. Amen? Not just by ourselves. So that is the place of uh, sorry, we were talking about reading God's word and the word of God comes alive. And then, of course, once you read God's word, there's another dimension where I have read then I begin to do. Because I know this is right. I do it and I do it with all of my heart. This is wrong. I do not do. Is it easy? By no means it is not. Holiness is a very difficult journey. But then you've read another part of the word of God that says, the child do not leave you as orphans. I leave you with the Holy Spirit and he will empower you. He will strengthen you. Then you've read another word that says, when you do not know what to do or what to pray, the Holy Spirit is your helper. So you're able to say, Holy Spirit, I'm so weak in this situation. Please come and help me. And then he empowers you and you can't even explain how you got out of that situation. But praise God, you got out of that situation and you give God all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. So doing the word of God. Doing the word of God. You learn that the Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Be that person who walks around saying, Father, I need some sick people around me. Where are they? Where are they? Why? So that you can exercise the word of God. Until you lay hands on the sick and they recover, you will not get to know that you can lay hands on the sick and they recover. You keep thinking that whenever you meet the sick, you'll tell them, I turned a church Sunday. And the person's like, Atas, did you come on Tafika Sunday? You know they are so sick. They are like, which Sunday are you telling me about? Me, do I even know about tomorrow? Do you know how sick I'm feeling? Someone is in an oxygen mask. They are there. And then you're telling them, I'm believing God you shall be discharged and come to church on Sunday. If they're discharged, they're fine. Okay? So let's learn to exercise our faith. By the way, when you pray, lay hands on the sick to recover, the, the first time I laid hands on the sick to recover, they, they, they got more sick. Okay? And then I laid hands on somebody to recover and he died. And I had full faith, by the way. I had no doubt. I had full faith. In the name of Jesus. Par le, le nom de Jesus Christ. Even the, the, you know, the, 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 whatever, the, 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 whatever, the, the French had come back. Ah, ah, je, 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 je parle maintenant. Tu es, tu, de ton bénis, dans le nom de Jesus Christ. Maintenant. Oh, you are praying every 
everything. I was praying for somebody from Congo. Then we went somewhere, and then I started feeling, hey, that person, everything is not okay. So I dashed back, and the person had just died. I cried. I cried. But Jesus, I prayed even in French. I had no, I trusted God. What happened? And you start learning about God is sovereign. Eh? Yours is to lay hands on the sick for them to recover. What he does after that has nothing to do with you. It's him, okay? He is God. So practice the word of God. Keep the word of God. The Bible says that you are his disciples if you love one another. But also the Bible says for those that keep his commandments, those that keep his word, those are the people who love him. So with God, you can't be that person who says, God, I love you so much. Jesus, I love you so much. Then you go online. Not after Udaku, eh? Udaku. Ud I hate that word, by the way. Eh? And I, I can't believe it when I hear it from a Christian. As in, you actually go looking for nonsense. You know? Then you're there laughing. Hey, 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 come on, blogs. Laughing at people. Laughing at the predicaments of people. You know? I saw, I saw something written this morning by a lady in a, on a page that I don't like. But you know one of those pages, if you have a business, you need to be on it. So anyway, I went and I found she had written on somebody and she had written something really nasty, uh, insulting somebody who had commented um, on, on the post. And people are there laughing at Pwaha! But then that's another thing. Whenever you see people writing Pwaha, that's such a malicious way of laughing. Eh? At Pwaha! Or depending on where you're from, Pwaha! I mean, normally it's such a, it shows you're such a careless person by the time you write that, eh? and malicious as well. Anyway, yeah, some people are there. Then one person had said, okay, Ojamwambia Vizuri, you know? So then people had gone there and laughed also on that. I don't know what generation this is where people are sadistic. And they enjoy it when you're shamed online and when people put you down. It's the most shocking thing. And the Christians don't speak. Little mice, quiet. Amen. It's my private salvation. This world is not my home. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. See no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. And you're there. You say nothing. Silent. Anyway, practice the word of God. Keep the word of God, okay? Sorry, keep the word of God. The next one is practice the word of God. Sorry, I'm confusing the two. Keep the word of God. To keep the word of God is to obey the word of God. Then the next one is to practice, exercise the word of God. Activate the word of God. So that when you pray, you pray using scripture. I don't know about you, by the way, whether you pray using scripture. But I've found that when you use scripture, there's a courage that rises inside of you. Do you remember on Friday? The way we spoke using scripture? There was so much discouragement and intimidation in the air. So we use scripture so that we could remind Satan, by the way, the Bible already says this and that and the other. Okay? We have authority. We've been given power to subdue. We have power to trample on snakes and scorpions. Some may trust in chariots. Some may trust in horses. But we here trust in the name of the Lord. And God has promised that those who trust in him, you activate the word of God and you speak the word of God. Amen? 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 Amen. And then, of course, if you add to that, if you're given the mic to pray and use the word of God, you normally sound like someone who knows how to pray. So it's also a very helpful thing when you quote the word of God. Father, in your word it is written. In John chapter... Da, 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 yeah? Instead of you who comes here and says, God, God, I'm just asking you right now. God, God, you know. You know God, you know. You know God, you know. I like giving people mics, by the way. You can tell where their prayer life is at. Eh? can tell the last time they talked to God because they are fumbling and trying to figure out, by the way, where are we at? Hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Be prayed up because we'll call upon you to pray and to lead prayer. So activate the word of God. Practice the word of God. Use the word of God. Overcome using the word of God. Quote scenarios. Quote cases. By the way, if you're a lawyer, you know very well, or if you observe or watch anything to do with courtrooms, they normally use precedence. In the case of this and that and the other. So even us, we use the same thing. Father God, when, when, when uh, the children of Israel had gone forward, oh Lord Jehovah God, carrying the Ark of the Covenant, they stood on the edge. Father God, we 
go forward using your word, declaring we are the ark of the covenant today. And as we step on the edge of this place, the Jordan must part in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, when Moses went and he lifted up his staff in the name of Jesus, the oh Lord Jehovah God, on that place, oh Lord Jehovah King of glory, you caused the Red Sea to part. So right now I lift up my holy hands and in the name of Jesus, this situation must part by the glory of God because the same anointing that was in Moses is also in me. Learn to pray with power. I always tell Christians, be the kind of Christian that when the demons are summoned and sent to you, they're scared. They start shaking and say, oh, but I went the last time. You go. No, you go. No, you go. Some of you, you know, like I said before, even demons that are handicapped, that are retarded, some of them will even not be afraid to come. They look at you and they start, it comes there and it's it's got form like a carabid little thing. It can't even control it. It's like, it's okay. It's okay. And then where were you? I'm so discouraged. Be a Christian that prays with power and stands powerfully on the word of God. You are as strong as your prayer life. And you are as strong as the word of God that you read and retain and use as you grow day by day. You want to grow? Read the word of God. Practice the word of God. Keep the word of God and move with the word of God. Those are dimensions of prayer. The next dimension of prayer is faith. Okay? Faith. And faith is about action. You've heard that it's good to tell people about Jesus Christ. One plants, another one waters, the Lord receives the harvest. Father God, as I go out today, I want to tell at least one person about you today. Make it a habit of asking God, give me an opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. Give me an opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. So put your faith in action. Uh, trust the Lord. Learn to, you know, like for me right now, I'm practicing something. This last time when the attacks came, I was, I was a little intimidated. And it's interesting because uh, as I sat there reviewing and, you know, standing and getting out of it even before the storm ended, but I turned back and I said, God, why was I not ready for this attack? Because if I get anxious, it shows that I don't trust you. It shows also where I'm at in terms of my faith because I should be able to be anxious for nothing because the Bible says so. I should not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, I present my request to God, not worrying. Not worrying about anything. So I, I, I asked the Lord. Then yesterday I got another one uh, trying to intimidate. This time I was so calm. I was prepared and I blessed the Lord. I was just here in church and I get this phone call. And I say, slow down. It's an emergency, you're right. It's highly secret, all right. But you tell me if you want me to help you. And you know there were intimidations or throwing in names again. I tell you, there are some businesses that if you enter into, you better enter with them with, with Jesus, eh? Yes, but anyway, at the end of it all, they called, apologized, and said, okay, sour, sour. Uh, yeah, so how, how will you help us? It turned. While earlier on, it had been intimidation. Can you present yourself? Or we come and find you. I don't know what, what threats. And I'm like, no, you're not going to threaten me. Don't call my phone and threaten me. It doesn't work that way. I'll report it to the police. It's illegal. You know, so you have your position. You know who you are. And you're able to take your position without being rude, without whatever, but also... Remember, there's, there's something that I learned, by the way. Being a HR practitioner, I learned something. People walk around carrying garbage. And uh, some people call it a monkey, okay? But people walk around carrying garbage. And if you will not be careful, people will be dumping garbage on you. They're always looking for a place to dump. So be there for people, encourage them, strengthen them, but refuse to be a, an area where people can dump their garbage on you. Okay, and you've got to learn how to do that um, by walking in faith, uh, practicing, okay, putting your faith into action, learning to wait. Sometimes you've got to wait. What is fasting? Fasting is waiting upon the Lord. And you know, sometimes you can fast. Like yesterday, we were at a wedding. I can say this because it's a corporate fast. And we kept, I kept on being offered food. But I only took encouragement because my son was with me. So we were encouraging ourselves as the rest of the children were busy bonding and the food was so good. And you know, the sun was so hot. And you know, when you're fasting and you're outdoors, the sun feels hotter, isn't it? And you're feeling irritated and you worry like... And we had to encourage ourselves. And someone comes and says, why aren't you eating? You know, hey, relatives can tell you anything. Anyway, you know, but waiting, waiting, waiting. So we waited and finally 
Six o'clock reached, I blessed the Lord. I remember looking at my, my clock as we were driving, and it was 18 minutes past, past six, eh? 18, 18. Said, hallelujah, Jesus, right now I can eat. Oh, Jesus. This fast has been difficult, but of course, you know the tougher that it is, the more the glory, isn't it? And then, of course, expect. Be a person who expects. And, and, and you know, under faith, eh? the dimension of faith, expect God to come through for you. Maybe you felt the last time he didn't come through for you, but don't be the person who always thinks, hey, God, you know, you know, eh? that other time you didn't come through, yeah? So be someone who expects to hear from the Lord. And then there's number 10, repeat everything again, okay? <laughs> repeat, repeat everything again and make it a cycle where you're always repeating those things and using them interchangeably. Amen. I want to go quickly through the watches. So the first watch begins in the evening, okay? The first watch begins in the evening just as the sun is coming down. So when we're told watch and pray, when Jesus is asking his disciples, could you not watch with me even for one hour? You're talking about the watches, okay? So the first watch is the evening watch. It's from 6 p.m. To 9 p.m., okay? 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., wherever you are, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., that will be the first watch. And the first watch is a place where you release your anxieties to the Lord. It's a place where you release your anxieties to the Lord. It's a place where, re by releasing your anxieties to the Lord, you're going before God and you're saying, Father, this day has been like this, like that, the other. It's good to do it before you end up going to whatever, you go home, eh? So on your way home, if you can take time and uh, attend to this first watch at 6 p.m., asking God to just cleanse you, purify you, sanctify you, or when you get home, go to your bedroom, make it a habit, especially if you have children, tell them that, you know, when mommy gets home, when daddy gets home, I hug you and everything, then I go to the bedroom to freshen up, but you know very well, it's not just a shower you're taking, you're also pouring your anxieties out to God so that you don't stop, start snapping at people. Hmm, card full, oh dear. All right. Then evaluate yourself. So you take a moment and in the presence of God, you evaluate yourself. And uh, you ask God to evaluate you, to check you. How are you doing? How is your walk with God going? How did you do today? Did you practice the word of God? Did you keep the word of God? Or how did it go? Amen. Do you have to log off and log back in or what's the deal? It's going to continue? Oh, because it's just darkness right now. Okay. All right. Yeah, so evaluate yourself in the presence of God. For those who are watching us online, sorry about that interruption. It doesn't, okay, it's back already. Sorry about that uh, interruption, but what you've just missed after release your anxieties to God is to evaluate uh, yourself in the presence of God. So you take a moment, and in evaluating, it means you're also repenting. So if there are things you didn't do well, if there's a mistake that you made, remember, I highly encourage you not to wait until evening to repent, okay? When you make a mistake, always ask God to forgive you at that very moment. It's very quick. You just say, oh, dear Lord, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that wasn't right. I didn't do right, okay? Don't keep it till evening. When you keep it till evening, Satan is going to begin to learn to manipulate you with guilt. So you're always walking feeling guilty. Even when you've done nothing wrong, you feel guilty. And remember, God does not send guilt. God convicts, he doesn't send guilt. Then at this hour, we meditate upon the word of God. And then we begin to quiet our emotions. Remember, we're also preparing to hear from God through the night, okay? We meditate upon God's word. So this is not the time to catch up on Facebook and your friends and everything. It's a time to meditate on God's word. It's a time to quiet your emotions. It's a time to seek God's forgiveness before going to sleep. So make sure that, you know, before you sleep, you're able to seek God and be at peace, that your soul will be right with God. Um, Whatever was unclear during the day, you ask God to clear it for you and you ask him to speak to you about it. You're also reading God's word so that you can learn more, so that you can do better tomorrow, so that you can be more equipped tomorrow. You're thanking God that the armor of God was able to hold and you're asking God to continue to cause the armor of God to hold through the night. You're refreshing that armor of God even as you're getting ready to sleep. You're speaking to your spiritual man and speaking strength to your spiritual man. You're speaking to your spiritual man and reminding your spiritual man that even though your physical body is going to sleep, your spiritual man is not going to sleep. Because you never know what the enemy may send at night. So you need to be able for your spiritual man to be awake and fighting. Some of you have sent me messages and told me how you've had dreams that you're praying in tongues. That's a very good thing. It means your spiritual man was fighting, okay? In your dream, by the way, if you have dreams where you're being chased or being attacked, and you find that you're powerless, you find you're being defeated, it means you really need to work on your spiritual man because your spiritual man is not strong. In your dreams, whenever you're being chased, your spiritual man should be able to stand up with the word of God and to speak and for you to overcome even though you're sleeping. 
Amen? It's one of the ways to check yourself in terms of how you're doing with God. And then um, you're also praying for the following day and uh, you're seeking healing. In this hour, God really comes down heavily with healing. So for those who are seeking healing, this first watch is a good time to wait upon the Lord to heal you, to just drain away the pain and the difficulty and whatever you're going through. Remember, healing can be for your heart. Healing can be for your, you know, because of your heart. Your heart is broken. Healing can be for your mind. Healing can be for your eyesight. Healing can be for your hearing. Maybe it's been disrupted. And healing can be from diseases and any attacks of the enemy. Amen? And then at this hour, we're also rededicating ourselves to the Lord, okay? It's, an hour, it's, a, it's a prayer watch of rededicating yourself to the Lord. The second prayer watch... The second prayer watch begins at 9 p.m., okay? It begins, begins at 9 p.m., and uh, I had given you quite a number of scriptures on this one, so I will not go back there, but I'll tell you quite a bit of it is in Psalm 119. Uh, quite a bit of it is in Psalm 119. A specific highlight is Psalm 119, verse 62. And it says, at midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment, okay? 9, 9 p.m. to midnight, then... Um, Please note that we, at this hour we are preparing for anything to happen and we are calling on the blood of the Passover lamb to be applied on the doorposts of our, our lives. This is the time that most of us will be retiring to bed, uh, normally not maybe the, the 6 to 9, uh, but the 9 to midnight is a lot of time, uh, the times that a lot of people will be sleeping. So we need to be aware that at the midnight hour was also the time that uh, the angel of God struck uh, the firstborn of the Egyptians. Eh? So in the midnight hour can be an hour of judgment. It can be an hour of judgment or an hour of great favor because you're changing days. So please enter into it, anticipating to be able to command your next day and to command how the rest of the day goes, okay? Um, during this hour, God begins to deal with our enemies and any enemies of our breakthrough. So we are calling to God to begin to arise and deal with enemies of our breakthrough because remember there's a courtroom session that's being held and be making a decision about the next day and you want your name to be upon the courtroom side of favor which is the heavenly side. So you make your petitions to the Lord. It's also an hour of war so you want to go into warfare um, and uh, uh, at this time God will give you great breakthrough if you're at war. So if there are warfare situations that we're dealing with, we begin an early hour that you begin with is before the enemy is releases his demons and all that. So uh, 9, 9 p.m. to midnight which is the second watch. Uh, it's also an hour... Um, Sorry, it's also an hour when satanic activity begins to be released uh, but the angels of God also begin to arise. So please not begin. Eh? They begin to be released. Around this hour, they begin to be prepared so that they are being released. They are being sent on assignment. But you also need to know that God's angels increase about this hour. And then, of course, during this time, we must destroy the works of darkness uh, ahead of them being released. So that by the time the demons are being released, they actually find that they are powerless. They are unable to move. We can shut them down to a point where their gates cannot even be able to open to release them. We can shut down their evil portals. Uh, P-O-T-A... Huh? L.S., eh? before somebody writes potholes. Eh? You know, it's good to, to say those things. Eh? Yeah, so the evil portals, P-O-R-T-A-L-S. So we can shut down any evil portal, and then we open the heavenly portals. And uh, by so doing, uh, we work together with the angels of God because that is something that only we as man, men can do. We as human beings, we're the ones with that kind of authority. So we activate, we release, we, we release our faith, we anticipate, we expect, and we look to God. And of course, those who look to God can never be ashamed. And then, so we destroy the works of darkness. We also speak life in the place of, of darkness. Always remember, when you bind something, you must lose something. When you, when you shut something, you must open something. When you remove something, you must, you must replace it with something. Never ever be the kind of prayer warrior. Hey, some people are sound asleep na kwambia. Anyway, you know you cannot control people's whatever's. Kama eh? kwa na watamaduni dancers here dancing, then you would have been listening. But now we are speaking things that release your life. And then later on you write to me, Apostle, please help me on the very same thing that I preached on. Command stability also in your life, command stability in your life, command stability in the nation, command stability over the situations in your life, command stability, come against any spirit of instability, which is a demonic uh, uh, spirit, and then of course, speak restoration. This is the hour when we speak restoration, and you can stand on Psalm 68, um, that talks about God arising, amen? 
call God to arise in this hour. The third watch, I said we're going to stop at 12.30, but uh, unfortunately it's already 12.30. Can I go on or do I stop? Okay, all right. There was a cartoon once that, that wrote at the, that moment when you want, uh, Nini, you want your pastor to stop preaching because you're so hungry and somebody says, go on, minister. <laughs> so hopefully there's no one here who's like, oh my God, who said go on? All right, third watch is from midnight to 3 a.m. Midnight to 3 a.m. And at this time, the Lord begins to strengthen your faith, okay? Because you're going to need it. It's a very difficult prayer hour. Uh, then the Lord uh, begins to strengthen our faith because at this time, things look very, very dark. Uh, normally, if you're discouraged, the discouragement increases during this hour. And if you're sick, you get more sick during this hour. Things look very, very uh, dim during this hour. So you must be ready to wage war. This is not an hour when you wake up and then you're just praying, Father, please, I'm just asking you, please, 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 God, please, please, Father, no, this is a, a soldier's hour of prayer. It's a soldier's hour of prayer. You're going to encounter a lot of things and it is actually the darkest hour, okay? It is also the hour when Peter, who had vowed, me, I can never leave you. I know they've left you, but me, me, do you know me? I am the rock. I will never leave you. He's, that's the hour that the rock actually walked away from God. Eh? Matthew 26, verse 34. Not only denied him once, but denied him three times. And of course, God, Jesus had to restore him by asking him three times, do you love me? Okay, that's what he was doing. He was restoring. Remember, that is a principle of the spiritual. You deny God three times, you must acknowledge him three times or more. Okay? Always learn. When you remove something, you replace it. Okay? Amen. So, in this hour, it's an outright hour of war. Okay, so if you're a baby Christian, please, this is not the hour to wake up and see that you're practicing your two little muscles. Okay, command your day and prophesy into it, and note that it is an outright hour of war in the in, in the darkness uh, sector. It's called it's sector. I'm telling you, I've been so corporate for so long. Yes, it's a sector, I guess. Eh? It's called the witching hour. Witchcraft is actually an industry. Eh? Which it's called the witching hour. Yes, that's what they use. Eh? And they know that it's their hour. They consider it their hour. But we've been told the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to God, including time. Eh? Yeah. So in this hour, we seek God's direction. So we just, just don't pray blindly. We must put on the full armor of God when we are praying in this hour. We learn to use the weapons of our warfare as we listen to God. So you've got to be able to listen to God's voice. You've got to be able to ask God, which direction do I pray on this issue? Which scripture are you giving me to use on this issue? Please note that scripture is one of the most powerful weapons of warfare that we have uh, together with the blood of Jesus Christ and of course it's called the sword of the spirit which is the word of God okay so use it use it use it and then command a release of prisoners during this hour command a release of prisoners if Satan has taken anybody captive your family members if there are people who are in bondage command them to be released in the name of Jesus Christ it's also a wonderful time to come against uh, cults uh, because normally people who are in cults the ones that say the name of Jesus Christ conveniently but of course you know, the cult leader is the one who's exalted more than the name of Jesus. This is the hour that they normally go to the forest, to the caves to get more power so that then by the time that you guys are coming for morning glory they're looking like they're shining bright like the star eh? but they've actually been out in witchcraft. Yeah, so that's the time also to shut down their wicked portals that's the time to shut them down, those that claim to walk upon the name of Jesus Christ and to say that they shall not seek whatever communication they are seeking, they shall not get there and God will actually shut them down within no time. So defend your family altar at this time as well. This is a time to call on the family altar to speak, to defend the family altar as a priest of God. So this is the actual hour for that. So because we are redeeming the family altar, this is a good hour to be awake so that then we can be praying between midnight and 3 a.m. Then seek the miracles of God and release the blood of Jesus Christ upon things that have previously been bound. Seek miracles. Call for miracles. Call, declare that you believe in the God of miracles. And then, of course, speak the release of the blood of Jesus Christ. This is the perfect hour to go to the courtrooms of heaven. Okay? Go to the courtrooms of heaven and ask God to walk with you and ask God, you know, make a petition before God on the courtrooms of heaven. I have taught on the courtrooms of heaven. I don't know if it's available online. Uh, Marie, do you have the courtrooms of heaven online on, on, on YouTube? I don't know if it's available online, but I have taught on the courtrooms of heaven before. I don't know how many of you are here when I was teaching on the courtrooms of heaven. Anybody attended when I'm teaching the courtrooms of heaven? 
Yes, a few people. You know, sometimes you think you've imagined. So when people raise up their hands, it helps. I don't know what happens in Sozo. It's like people come, they grow, then they go. I don't know where they go. But anyway, you know, because I would expect everybody to raise their hands because I, it was in a church service that I taught on the courtrooms of heaven. I've also taught online as well. Um, so this is a good time for the courtrooms of heaven to go and make petitions. And there are some things that where Satan has legal ground, you will have to do a courtroom session. You will have to do a courtroom session. And I'm not going to do a courtroom session for 100 people. At the way I come and do a courtroom session for you, I come and do a courtroom session for you. We equip saints of God so they may be able to stand and be able to take their victory. There are also things in the courtroom of heaven you don't want me to hear as a servant of God. If I hear that you guys used to have incest you know, in your family, is that a really good thing? If I hear that you guys are night runners in your family, I don't know whether that's a good thing. You know, so I, I honestly, there are things I don't want to know. I don't want to look at you and be saying, ooh, I know. There are the things I don't want to know. Okay, so learn to pray for yourself so that then also you're able to also deal with some secret things that God would prefer to keep secret within your family and then, of course, wipe them away by the blood of Jesus Christ so they are not even secrets anymore because, of course, what is secret Satan will always bring out, eh? Hey, there's a young lady there. Hey, I wonder if you're having some dreams. Wow. All right. I don't know if it's a young lady. Actually, I can't quite tell from here. Nightmares or dreams. This is the hour that if you're sleeping, this is where God will release nightmares. Oh, not God releasing nightmares, but Satan will bring nightmares or you will have dreams uh, that God will speak to you about. The fourth watch. The fourth watch, I think I'm going to stop here now, by the way, so that I don't rush. I'm going to teach about the fourth watch, then we'll continue from the fifth watch next, week, next Sunday. On the fourth watch, the fourth watch is from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Personally, it's my favorite watch. Um, it's, I, I love it. It's, uh, at least that's the grace I'm moving in right now. Uh, but I've pretty much always found that, you know, I am very comfortable in this watch. I don't struggle. Um, the fourth watch, if you read Job chapter 33 from verse 15 to 18, this is the hour when God visits man. Okay? This is the hour when God visits man. This is when the hour that God really comes and, and, and attends to you and listens to you. And we are continuing to command our morning. We are continuing to speak before the Lord. But also, in this hour, you know, we become God's audience. We become God's audience. And at this time, you can pour your heart out you can share anything with him. You can listen to him as well. It's a wonderful hour for hearing God's voice. Normally, it's a very quiet hour. And then use the word of God during this hour as well to activate the move of God. Invite the Holy Spirit. Invite the presence of God. You know, um, I was learning the other day about someone um, who leads, uh, inter uh, what are they called? They're called... Um, Kenya House of Prayer, the Kenya House of Prayer. Um, the, one of the leaders of Kenya House of Prayer shared an example of how he and his wife, you know, I was so envious. Eh? He and his wife said they wanted um, to, 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 to visit God. So what they did, they woke, they, 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 let me not say they woke up, but they dressed up in their best outfits. They put on their perfume and cologne and everything. They laid out the Bible. Then they put a seat there for God, their best seat. They put it there for God. Then they just sat there, and then they said, God, today we've come to visit you. And they share that the glory of God shook their house. And they say that there's no time they've had God move like God moved in that time. Be that kind of dramatic Christian. Say that, God, in this hour, um, I, I want you to come and visit me. Or I'm visiting you. Yeah? Come, come over. And then be someone who's prepared for God to visit you. You know, I remember in university, I was a young, t foolish teenager. And uh, uh, we had these beds where they space. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just really came from a someone where I learned that God visits people. So I began this prayer direction. Oh, God. Visit me, Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have just the right song. As I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, till we are standing face to face, I look upon your countenance and see the fullness of your face. I can only bow down and say, you know, so you're worshiping. Oh, 
worshiping you. There's, this, there's some songs that just take you to the Holy of Holies. And suddenly, in comes the Father. And let me tell you, when the Father comes, he needs no announcement. When Jesus comes, you'll be like, hmm, I feel the glory of God. I don't know who came in. Then maybe you'll see his feet and you'll see, you know, they're punctured and you can see the blood. And you know, oh, my brother has come, hallelujah. And you can hold his feet and you can love on him. And he's so wonderful and glorious. When the Holy Spirit comes, so many people normally close the window because nobody comes as a wind. So a lot of you will stand up and start looking for where the wind is coming from. And he's like... I thought you wanted me to come, you know? So he's blowing, you can't find the window, you can't get the hint. If there's no window, what are you looking for? So you're looking in the vents, and of course he leaves, you know? Because he comes a lot of times like a wind, he can come like a heat, suddenly the room may feel like it's gotten hot, suddenly you may just feel just like a warm blanket and all that. So, and, and, and he, for him, because of his subtle way, it's easy to miss him. So anyway, the father walked in. When the father walks in, eh, what happens is that your sins stand in front of you. Yes. You are naked and you will feel ashamed if you don't know him well. So anyway, he walked in and I don't think I'd taken time to repent. But either way, whether I'd taken time to repent or not, one thing was for sure, there are some sins that were in my life as much as I was there saying, how you know? Yes, and I enter the holy of holies. Yes, nothing. What? He walked in. I jumped under the bed and I started shouting, no, 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 please, please, it's okay, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And he just laughed and he left. You know? And I finally, you know, I wasn't sure he had left yet. I just had some laughter. Then I, I, I felt like there was something that had changed. But I stayed under that bed eh, for long, like another hour. Just saying, Jesus, Jesus, am I okay? Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, am I okay? Jesus, oh, 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 oh. I was reciting my sins from one to a million. Yani, you go back to nursery school. God, when they call me Fati Fati Bambula, I was so angry, my father. Which one, which one, which one, God, which one? You know, that time, let me tell you, if I'd been given a checkbook, I'd give God a million. Everything in my account, I would have given to him. I was so scared, you know? Anyway, the fifth watch. So why am I sharing that story? So that you may know that when God comes, it's not always as beautiful as we romanticize it to be. So be prepared. Sanctify yourself. The Bible says sanctify yourselves for I'll do a new thing tomorrow, okay? Sanctify yourself. Purify yourself, okay? Uh, dress nice, you know? Although the clothes don't matter because he doesn't see our clothes anyway. But just be prepared as you invite the presence of God, okay? And then it's normally a good thing when you, you cover yourself with the blood of Jesus Christ, then you won't be as scared. So that is the fifth watch. For me, it's my favorite watch. Everybody needs to find their watch. And, you know, for me, it's my favorite watch in this season. But, of course, if I'm moving into a season of waging warfare a certain way, normally I will move into the different places. You can ask the Holy Spirit to invite you into the right watch for you, or you can set an alarm clock depending on the watch. But please note that there are watches that are specific for, for waging warfare. There are watches that are, have more grace than others and everything. And, but all the same, one thing I want to tell you is you're not legalistic. Don't be a legalistic Christian. Don't be the one who says, hi, 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 I've seen a breakthrough. I've seen a breakthrough. Oh, Kumba is that prayer watch. Ay, the witching one. Ah, you know, you've got to learn about the power of your mind. If you believe that God cannot visit you at a certain hour, he will not. But if you believe that God transcends the hours, transcends the times, then you know that the time works for us, not us working for the time. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Shall we pray? I want you to just begin to intercede. It's that hour when we trust God to add to our numbers. Please, nobody moving other than the technical team. It's a holy hour. Just bow your head in the presence of God. You want to give a moment for anyone who would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord. Today is your day of salvation. You've heard the voice of God. You've learned that God speaks to people. He visits people. And you're saying, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left behind. You know, you can, you can sing songs like, you know, as you visit others, Lord God, uh, uh, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. But if you don't give your life to Jesus, then he will pass you by. Because you need to be marked with the glory of God. Anybody would like to give their lives to Christ? Also, if you give your life to Christ during the course of the week or privately and you'd like to, uh, us to pray with you, this is also the hour. 
Is there anyone who would like to give their lives to Christ online as well? You'd like to give your life to Jesus Christ as well online? Um, I'm actually on the app and watching. So if you'd like to give your life to Christ, just say, I would like to give my life to Christ. Actually, to make it quick, just put, put up a little hand and we are able to um, just pray with you as well. For those who are born again, be interceding. Be interceding. And ask the Holy Spirit to touch you and just to lead you to someone who is not born again. You'd like to give your life to Christ, just lift up your hand in the sanctuary. Anyone would like to give their life to Jesus? Nataka kuokoka, ningetaka kumpa Yesu maisha yangu, ili awe mokozi wa roho yangu. Just lift up your hand and we'll see that hand. If the ushers could help me because I can't see around the pillars in case there's a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Right now we command that anyone who's in this place or online watching hasn't given their life to Christ, that the demons that are trying to stop them from giving their life to Jesus would be bound long enough for them to make an intelligent decision. If there are altars of family that are speaking to withhold them from giving their lives to Jesus, we take authority over them right now and we destroy them by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now you're free to come to the presence of the Lord. You'd like to give your life to Jesus. Just lift up your hand in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a hand. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Angel. No, there's power when we bind demons. Sometimes the demons will stop you, and sometimes the altars in your family will stop you from giving your life to Jesus. Angel, why I see, I see your hand. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Re tamase kerebo zindarasaya. If you're online, you'd like to give your life to Christ, just lift up a hand, just like Angel has commented with a hand. Lift your hand like that, and in a moment we'll pray. If you're in the sanctuary, just lift up your hand before the Lord. I would like to give my life to Jesus. Oh, I've not been walking with God, and I'd like to repent and rededicate my life to Christ. Remember, Jesus is just about to come back. These are the signs and the times that we are seeing. The wickedness that has increased is because Jesus is just about to come back. Remember the Bible says that in the end time there shall be war and rumors of war. What is terrorism? Threats. War and rumors of war. Okay? The hour is at hand. If Jesus were to return today, you would not stand. You know you would go to hell. It's time to give your life to Jesus. Don't hold back. Come just as you are. That's what the Bible says. Don't think about, oh, let me go clean up this relationship. Let me go sort of the situation. No, you come just as you are and God keeps you. Any hand, just lift up your hand in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, don't see any other hand. Um, amen. We will pray with angel now for the sake of angel. Angel, if you'd repeat these words after me. It's just a prayer that we are leading you to pray before the presence of God. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin. For I have sinned against you. Come into my heart, Jesus. Be my Savior and my Lord. From today, I choose to walk with you. I love you, Jesus. Write your laws in my heart. Teach me your ways. Holy Spirit, come and be my helper. And right now, I proclaim by faith that I am born again and my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. I've just seen a vision right now, and uh, this is something that angel needs to know, of just one person standing in the presence of God and a light falling upon, uh, upon her, and um, just uh, some very, very big hands, which are the hands of God, and this is what they are doing. So that's what I've just seen, um, an angel just protecting her and uh, just speaking life 
even in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, let's all welcome Angel to the family of Christ right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mrs. Masharia, can I ask you to make contact with Angel so that we may know where she is and we are able to pray with her? Amen. In the name of Jesus. Let's just take a moment. Angel, we pray over you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your confirmation that you're protecting her, that you're watching over her, oh, Father, that the light of God is shining over her in the name of Jesus Christ um, or him. I don't know. Actually, I didn't see the gender. And Father, I ask, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you, oh God, would strengthen this child of God and that you would cause them to know that they are your son right now in the name of Jesus Christ. For in the presence of God, there is no male, there is no female. But what all of us that believe you, they are given rights to be called sons of God. Father, give them friends that will surround them and walk with them in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will not walk away, O oh Lord Jehovah God. Father, Lord, right now, thank you for your righteousness that you've clothed them with, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for this one, one soul that has given their life to Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Vicky. I see you right now, Vicky. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, Sarah, Sarah Mosongu, thank you. Vicky Njenga in Italy. And Al Manjambi, thank you so much for taking the time to bless Angel online and just love on her and encourage her. I love what's going on on our online ministry, that people just surround one another and we stand together. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much, online church, uh, for watching and uh, for just uh, coming on even now. Amen. Shall we appreciate the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, please stand up for the blessing. Lift up your hands in the presence of the Lord. And when I finish, you say amen. Amen. When I pause, you say amen upon the blessing. You receive it. Amen means so be it. Amen. Because you came to the house of the Lord today, may the Lord remember you. Amen. For not forsaking the gathering together of the brethren, may the Lord release extreme blessings over you. Amen. May his extravagant, extravagant grace become your portion even now. Amen. May the glory of the Lord surround you and overwhelm you. Amen. May the God of Zion release help at the point that you need it. May you know beyond a doubt that the Lord is with you. May his voice become a unique voice to you, more unique and clearer than any other voice. May you have the grace and the willpower to obey the Lord. May you enjoy reading God's word and may it come alive for you. May the word of God become relevant for every situation. And may God give you solutions even before the problem arises. May Jehovah shield and protect everything that matters to you. And may he cause you to walk in great power and anointing. May the Lord cover you when you're sick. And may his healing descend with great power. May his shalom be upon you regardless of what you face. And, may like, and, and like Samson, our brother, may you be strong in the power of the might of the Lord. Like David, may you become a worshiper through the week. And enjoy praise and worship in the house of the Lord. May you be a vessel of prayer. May you be found with your light burning like the wise virgins. And may you be found ready when the Lord Jesus returns for you. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May peace rest upon you and upon your households. And may the blood of Jesus Christ mark you now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Say hi to somebody next to you. I encourage cell groups to say hi to each other, gather together, and even hold hands after the service. It's a good thing. We have our worship uh, service uh, on Tuesday, okay? On Tuesday, 